Hello there, Dota 2 fans, and welcome back for more coverage. Today, we've got a good one. It's SG. It's unknown. We are down to the nitty gritty, the very end of week five, week six, just around the corner. Trent, we've said hey. this a few times, but this is where dreams are made, buddy. How the hell are you? <laughs> this is where it is, eh? This is the, the dream making machine. Matches. Uh, we are on the, uh, we're on Rainbow Road, you know? You get to the end of Mario Kart. <laughs> And there's no more rails, all right? No yeah. more, no more mistakes. No bumpers. Gotta be perfect, all right? Oh, yeah. God, I miss Rainbow Road. All right, guys. I think I'm just gonna bail on the panel and go play some Mario Kart. I think you know, crack out the old all Super right, Nintendo. So, you guys got this. I I got right. it, guys. It's after SG. the Beast Coast loss, things are so juicy. Cause if SG manages to win this game and win versus Beast Coast, which is unlikely but possible. There is a chance of a three-way tie because Thunder Predator is probably going to be Latam Defenders, right? Mm -hmm. They should. They very much should. Yeah, that would be quite the upset. So you're let right. Me, we're, we're fixing. Let me do some more Trent math for you here. Um, okay. No ping, just 2 owed Beast Coast. Do you yes. remember what happened when SG played no ping? SG 2-1 uh, to no ping. Ergo, exactly. they can easily crush Beast Coast. That's just simple mathematics. Exactly. I mean, so smart, dude. might as well just so, give them the five the two right now. That's, now. that's what I would say. Now, with unknown three and three, they still have a mathematical chance to go top two, right? With three losses, you could win out and then through tiebreakers end up still going to the major. Correct? Uh, I don't think For so. unknown because no pain is... anymore. No, you no can't. ping is four and three. And they I thought they were still potentially the problem is there's too many teams ahead of them. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I don't think it's possible because you would like as of now, uh, when Thunder Predator wins, they tie, but it, they're both going anyways. Mm, so you would okay. need to be able to make five points. To, so yeah. for right so now, it's, it's only Beast Coast Thunder Predator and SG that can make top two. Yeah. Okay. Beast Coast Thunder Predator and SG. So right now, yeah. Unknown has the fate of SG in their hands. If they win this series, they stop SG's yeah. chances of going to the major. Mm -hmm. If yes. SG win this series, they still have a chance. Not guaranteed, but they're still in contention for that second slot. Yeah, in fact, exactly. uh, it'll essentially, it'll guarantee our top two. Uh, mm. Not We won't know the order yet based off of this, but it will guarantee Beast Coast and Thunder Predator uh, if SG lose this series. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then they'll have to. Then that goes back to our situation with SG versus Beast Coast, in which we might wind up with some sort of a uh, a tie break potentially for the top slot. Okay. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Is this so, a Naga pin, by the way, Trent? Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. In oh, honor so of the Naga those heroes, you know? game. Yeah. 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 I'm uh, trying to, you know, bring some more Naga games in here, but maybe some Good. position four. I hear Europe's tearing that up. Why don't Especially we get any of that meteor hammer thing, love? Dude. Sounds yeah, off lane too. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds risky, but okay. Uh, so SG <laughs> unknown. Uh, SG should be favorites coming into this. Bowie, what are the numbers, baby? How you feeling? Are we 50 50, 60 40? How's that Brazilian mm. bias meter? All right. So I would say this is probably a 60 40 for SG, but uh, things have been pretty shaky, right? We got a decent amount of upsets. Uh, SG, they have a new coach, so uh, I'm not sure how oh, well prepared they are, you know, because they did exchange coaches. But I, okay. I expect this to be fairly even. I wouldn't be surprised if we go to game three. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really hyped for this because, as we already said, this is the last Brazilian hope here. If you want to see a Brazilian in the major, SG just needs to win the series. There's no other way around it. Well, more than a Brazilian, Bowie, five Brazilians. All right, let's jump in. Oh, We've yeah. got game number oh, yeah. one, draft ready to rock and roll. Let's see it. Oh. And it's a puck band. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. So, oh, remember, gentlemen, there was a patch that came out. Something else we need to make note of. Oh, my goodness. 28C. Dude, don't, so, don't even get me started on this patch, man. I, 
I am not happy about this. I am not happy about this. I think uh, we're not alone in that analysis. Uh, Frustrated that changes are being made this close to the end of the league when uh, a lot of teams are in this delicate, fragile state, one series loss, and you're done. Um, Yeah, frustrating to have to play against different stuff. But maybe Nick's assassin, a hero we won't see quite at the same priority. Puck, also victim of a couple of little micro bands. Uh, 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 Mm -hmm. Tweaks, rather. Not bands. The Bat Rider. Nerfs. Five, and the, ba- the was bad. Prob- Do you think it was bad? Who got hit the hardest? Sticky Napalm I... deals 50% less damage to all creeps. That's pretty bad. I don't even know if that's so. that bad, necessarily. Like, mm. it, Of course just... it's bad, but like, I think a lot of the, the Bat stuff still functions normally. It's you just know? that like, he split pushed so well. Like He was so fast at split pushing that it was really hard. Like The counters you would see were usually like the Storm and the Puck that could like instantly jump him. Yeah. Now it takes much longer for him to split side lanes and I think that makes him way more gankable, even if you go for the Boots of Travel build. But his lane is still pretty strong, for sure. Um, I mean, he did dip if hard. you want the raw numbers. He dropped a uh, little... 2.4 percent or sorry 2.7 percent ouch that's pretty Oof. rough that's a very significant single day drop yeah <laughs> yikes uh ricky and also getting some nerfs and that's win rate obviously just to be clear okay. wow an early death profit for sg some flex here you're mid you're three mm-hmm. unknown i like that I- i'm into that uh, kind of the same yeah. thing with the Mars 2 a little Seven bit, but uh, the, you know, where's the five Death Prophet? Speaking of things that five also were in Europe and we still never saw, uh, I don't think we got a game yeah. of support Death Prophet no. here, did we? They we were basically just doing the exact did. same thing that we do with Viper. It was like identical. Like They just literally yeah. first phase it, and then it either ends up as five or the mid, depending on uh, well, how good it is for the game. I mean, may- yeah, maybe SG we have done about. some research here, Trent. You never know. Well, they're supposed and to pick they, OD. They do have they? a new coach, so that that you know the draft is already pretty different. I don't think they were banning Anch or Spirit. But we, do we know uh, who the coach phase? is? Are we allowed to say? Has it been announced? Oh, is it? Yeah. So he is a Romanian player. He's friends with Immortal Faith. He uh, oh. his name is Vlad. Actually, he's a friend really? of mine. A Romanian really? named Vlad. Yeah. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he he is a wow. Romanian named Vlad, and um. I mean, that is funny though because like Trent, you mentioned that as a European strat. I wonder if if having a coach from a different region might actually you know, display some big drafting differences here because the well, meta I is mean, pretty different. All I'll say is five death problems. I don't think something you just throw onto your position five, five player. Remain. No, but still, I mean, this is already a wildly different opener than what we've seen from them in the past. So it yeah. is food for thought. All this right. is and uh, they do get the Beastmaster, which they have a one hundred percent win rate with. So that's always pretty scary. It's reminding me of our uh, general mantra of uh, keep it simple, stupid. Death Prophet Beastmaster. I wonder what they're going to do. You know? Mm. Strong heroes. <laughs> strong at what they do. Mm, <laughs> some towers, maybe. Uh, yeah. A Roshan, perhaps. Perhaps. Mm, quite. True. Maybe some auras. A bit of armor, you know? Wonderful so stuff. Has oh, Mars's stock remain. risen now with this patch because he wasn't touched at all? He was already pretty good. Um, is this an unknown thing or are we just going to start seeing a little more mars priority well, do you like playing against batrider and puck if the answer is no then your win rate went up a little bit which his did okay <laughs> so there you go that's the, that's, yeah. that's just the math, math. buddy there yep. you go <laughs> i think okay. viper is the same story right because now you have less breaks available and viper is one of the few that are still i guess viable in dispatch yeah i have to so. say that one caught me off guard i did not think they would remove the break from vendetta because it was just was such so a random, nothing right? yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, I was that guy last night in a pub. I didn't read the patch notes that clearly. Bristle on the other team, Nick's on our team. And I literally said, thank God we've got the break for Bristle back. I got oh, roasted. Radiant mm. team back. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> it was always weird, though. I never liked that being added to Nick's ult, and I'm not sad that it's gone. It seemed like a very random just, this guy needs something. Let's give him one of the rarer, more unique mechanics. Well, I, right. I liked one part, and that was that in the late game against... Because a lot of the heroes that were lying on their passives are like, well, I specifically Bristle, he'll also like ignore BKB. So mm-hmm. then you could actually blink stun his Nyx because he's not going to BKB it in time. And then mm-hmm. you could ult to, to break him, which was kind of cool. you know. I mean, it, yeah. it, it came in handy occasionally, but it just didn't... Was there ever a time where somebody picked Nyx for the break? I don't. I don't think so. 
I don't no. think you pick it for the break, but it's you just you, a little you nice to wait people on getting you know your bristlebacks and like uh, other other heroes that that's get a good point. Destroyed by yeah, him. yeah. It's just one more I advantage that he has that. in the draft when he has that uh -huh. extra thing. So that's fair. Make a PA yeah. sad. Speaking of which, she's still yeah. in, and uh, I see a lot of uh, right clickers heading out too. They take uh, the Wraith King here, uh, one of the best heroes Costa Bill has in this patch. Has a 75% win rate with it. Pretty much every other hero he played, they, they didn't really get good results. So they do take that out even after the nerfs. Ten seconds, really. Has he played terribly lately, or we just keep thinking about his terribly? Uh, he did play a terribly game. I think they lost. I, I, think, I think they, they did two too. Terribly games, maybe. They won one and lose uh, and lost one. Uh, that's always his hero that I think of. Uh, right now, all I can think of is Ava for their team. I don't know. I, I see Mars, Marana. The hmm. shield's really good. You got Beastmaster, Death Prophet. It's hard to squeeze in, but man, if they want to play some Ava Dota, I am in. Oracle is open too. Can always, even mm -hmm. if you don't dispel the the damp, the stun, you can always prevent that magic damage from the arena. And you have Death Prophet, so Oracle's like a, a love that yeah. combo pick. I wouldn't be surprised to see Oracle right now. Honestly, yeah, I think it's pretty correct. Venno pops out. I mean, you could go Oracle Ursa, something like that could be just fine. Mm -hmm. Wow. I am not a fan of Mars Morana. You know, like, technically, you're like, oh, yeah, they have so much lockdown in the lane. But I always feel like it doesn't translate that much to, to the mid-game. Like, I didn't see Mars Morana dominating as you would think it does. You know, it's not like Morana Ember. or Because Ember is mobile by itself, right? And Mars needs to either farm, like, U Scepter or Blink. It always feels like it doesn't really hit that well for me. Right. True, true, true. They are taking their time here. They're... Yeah, considering their options. This is the, the toughest pick of the draft here. Oh, all right, cool. Uh, what else is good with Beastmaster in lane? If we're thinking um, about four, what do we like? I think Tusk Earth is pretty Spirit. decent. Tusk save yeah. is nice versus Mars Marana. That's for sure. Yeah. Earth Spirit's first phase those... ban, though. Sad. Oh, yeah. Dire team pick. I still like him, though. Ah, uh, Beastmaster Rubik. Okay. Quality Classic. heroes. Yeah. Doesn't really give anything away. No issues. Good lane here. with the Beastmaster. They don't know anything about the lane they're going into, but it's Beastmaster Rubik, so and you've already banned the inch. It feels really hard to fight into it, right? Ten you have the remaining. superior attack speed that you remove the damage away. Five seconds remaining. Um stealing spear is really good. Stealing arrow. Too, I feel like they're gonna undying or CM or something. Oh Ooh. wow. They were they weren't uh, the ones playing the five Enigma, were they? Uh, no, it was not them. But KJ was playing a lot of Enigma five. I actually didn't bring it up, but huh. he he played a ton of Enigma five, and I've heard from multiple Ten pro players remaining. that Enigma five is AKA broken. Yeah, I've heard the same. So, I, I think this really? is probably five. Yeah, I mean it just I makes sense, right? Like think about how you used to play Enigma, and it's just you can basically do the same thing again. Or, yeah. Sorry, think about playing Lich. You're basically just five Lich. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh right, like you, the you old uh, demonic free, free conversion room. I think like yeah. the, the best part about it is that you can you deny the range creep and then you can pull. And since you don't have that range creep doing damage, a single pull pretty much denies the whole wave. So yeah. and like, plus you can be it, denying them the whole time with the eidolons. So exactly, it's like, it definitely exactly. will deny it. Oh, the Ursa you mentioned, Zyri. Yeah, Venno Ban, the key tell. Mm -hmm. Usually, I don't like him that much into Enigma because, like, the stash resistance doesn't Ten help you, but uh, you don't really have to worry about that, I guess, because it's a uh, position five, so he's not really going to be off like huge black holes. Remaining. Yeah, and you do I think have... Ursa just matches the tempo they like. You got this Death Prophet Beastmaster play fast. Ursa's it's like the Ursa Jug, the, like that kind of category of carries. Obviously, the Jug's banned, so I actually think they're going to five this Prophet because it, it feels really Dying bad to back. last pick your five, right? <sighs> I do feel like they might just just play this as a five DP. And they hit him with the vipes. You ban the Veno. I guess you have to assume yeah. this could be coming. Yeah, with Rubik, uh, you got a nice steal, right? Picking Rubik. Oh yeah, that's changed now. Huh? I think you take the Bat Rider out now, right? Because if this is if this Mars is gonna be middle. What were you saying, Chain Sorry, sorry. Isn't Rubik good against Viper? Like, don't yes, you just he's very good another toxin? Viper. Yes, he's so, yeah, very good. Yes, he's you pick Viper good. to counter the Ursa, but 
There's already a Rubik. I feel like hey, it's still a good prepared. trade-off, I think, in the end. I mean, it's kind of like they picked Enigma to Beastmaster in some ways, but yeah. you know, I, I think overall... Uh, it's, well, but like they picked good. the Rubik also. Uh, I guess they didn't pick it into the Enigma, but you just picked Enigma Viper into Rubik. I, yes. If I were SG, yeah. I'd be yeah. feeling pretty <laughs> solid about my position four right now. 100%. Uh-huh. Uh, it, feels, but, it feels greedy, but I, it's their game plan, and I think this Enigma... It's not going to be like your standard black hole enigma, so it doesn't get counter as much against the Rubik. He's going to be like uh, that, that no-tail enigma that just gave it away like six times in a row that game. <laughs> just like kept black hole. Like, oh. Did you guys see the Roche? Uh, the Roche play? I just watched that like half an hour ago, and I was very oh, confused. Oh, man. That was, that was beautiful. Didn't they? They lost that game, I guess, huh? Yeah, they lost. They, and they, they were like way really up. Well. Wow. <laughs> Yikes. And like Liquid had to win that, I think, too, to have a chance. Yeah, I think I think that keeps did. them in the the hunt up there. Mm-hmm. Now that we've yeah, stolen some of their European card. heroes, we'll you know tell you about what's going on up there just for you guys. And surprise, surprise, spoiler alert: <laughs> Secret got first, guys. Wow, oh. I, they haven't even Nobody finished the last had game. Nobody that. Radiant team bat. All right, and so the bat rider. The, there you go. I mean, they take the invoker bat rider, so they definitely. I mean, they're thinking about playing Mars mid, and they think this DP is going to be a 5. Um, so what is the mid hero here for? I guess they're probably just going to counter pick based on unknowns. Fifth probably, picks uh, they have last. Probably Lena. Remaining. Oh, the Medusa. All right. I mean, they need something. Alk is open, right? But how can you Beastmaster Ursa seems super scary. Yeah, the lane, I think, is the, the rough part here, too. Mm-hmm. I really I think wish they could even send the Ursa to, to the Alk lane if they do go Alk. Ten seconds remaining. Just crush him. I guess even Beastmaster crushes him too. <laughs> Bring back the oh, Luna. Uh, this, is a, this is a tough this call. Is not though. HFN. Monkey is like, eh. Mm. I think you PL right. Morphling PL. Yeah. I think any PL morph players. Then... Double oh, Midnight see. Pulse. Pog. Wow. That's actually pretty strong. Monkey. Yeah, they'll take a monkey. Monkey okay. King. They keep it pretty classic. It fits the tempo of uh like they need uh another hero that can play with them. They can't get away with like a, a Spectre or something here, right? It's just gonna a lot be of circles. too slow. Yeah, very much on this team fight. That is a lot of circles. We got like three circled ultimates, and then we also have uh the nether toxin that's gonna be mixed in there too. So wow. passives be gone. What happened? Yeah. Did Timber just get ignored this whole draft, by the way? He did. He, he did. did. But there he's a Viper, so... Yeah, yeah, no, I was just... Thinking so we're looking for a five, value. right? Unless it's a DP switcheroo. I, I'm still looking at Oracle like, okay, yeah, let's go. I mean, mm, uh, they could Venge. Swap the Enigma, swap the Monkey King out. God, if that hero wasn't so dead, but uh, yeah. And thank goodness. They, they go us. for the Oracle. All right. So... Mm. I think they probably did have this idea of like, okay, if we have to, we can put the Death Prophet 5. Mm. And then in the end, it was just like, you know, Death Prophet's still really good here, guys. Like, it's either that or you yeah. pick Lena, right? Versus the Viper. That's pretty much your two options. Exactly. I, I like this. I feel like the Oracle versus Enigma is a really good response. Um, you do have the a lot of push actually coming from SG. Uh, unknown, they, they are liking yeah. heavily on it. They have Yadomi, but he's going to be a 5. Probably will not have money for like a Necronomicon and stuff like that. So I, I think I I'm gonna go with SG here. I feel like uh, they just have it easier for them. Ten they have strong lanes remaining. and they have a lot of push. It's agreed. It's just much easier. If this five goes late though, remaining. unknown gets really scary because of that. It eventually that five enigma will have blink BKB and then that's a whole different game. Oh, they got Rubik at Beastmaster. It's fine. True, true. I actually don't see this game going that well for Unknown. They really need to snowball hard, just like score a bunch of kills. Yeah. This game's going to be real hard. I'm mm -hmm. ready to see Theo pop off on this Rubik. Primed for a good game. They were saving yeah. that Oracle all the way through. A lot of synergy. Yeah, but it's that's gonna be three bloody. for SG. We'll see, though. I'm ready for a good game here. Another big series, and we're ready to dive into it. We've got two commentators that you'll probably recognize. Gary, are you jumping on this SG train as well? I know how much you like to jump... Uh, jump aboard the favorites. <laughs> Come on now. The other night I was rooting for Mad Kings, you know, getting onto that storyline. Come on. Come on. Let me have one. I, I do like SG draft, you best. 
I I'm actually leaning towards unknown. Like, sure, SG have a lot of push here, Theban, the DP, the Beastmaster, and yeah, they've got Rubik against this Enigma mm -hmm. and all that stuff, but when you're pushing towers against Mars Ulti, Moonlight Shadow, against this Black Hole, against Viper and Monkey, who are pretty good in lane stage, it, it can cause yeah. problems, can't it? The problem there is that you're now you're relying on your defense to make you succeed in the game, mm. where we've learned throughout these games and in Dota that a good offense is what makes a good defense. So if you're not able to make your aggressive plays and then take objectives through that, you're going to always be playing from behind in this game. And I think SG's draft just has that element of aggressiveness and tower taking that will put them uh, ahead in this draft, in my opinion, at least. Yeah, they can be the ones to make that first step. And having that last pick Oracle feels real nice as well. The backup plan, always that fail safe to bail out your DP, your Ursa. When they do get yeah. caught in these big team fight ultis. It's, Let's uh, not forget that uh, the Beastmaster, this was something that SG is pretty much unbeatable with, right? Like throughout all the games that we've seen in this DPC, there's a one hero that people started to just pretty much straight up ban out because they were winning games in like 20 some minutes when, whenever they got this hero. Yeah, I think Bowie said they are actually un undefeated on it. 100% win rate. Yeah. King RD, absolute god on that Beastmaster. Mm -hmm. He's got the Necro book mm -hmm. queued up. There's no, there's no raindrops. There's no bracer. Nothing in there. Yeah, exactly. Okay, a good Beastmaster knows <laughs> you don't buy anything but Necro book. Anything but Necro book. That's it. Even the like the fastest Necro book timing. I think it was by S4, and he did that a couple of weeks ago. Um, and he just went belt, calling blade. Oh, and really? then he asked his teammate to pull him tangles. Yes. <laughs> He didn't buy any tangles even. What? He just asked his teammate to pull tangles and he just rushed Necrobook. He had it at like five minutes. That's nutty. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, actually... that's how you play Nec that's how you play Beastmaster. It, it, there's no other bit. There's no rage job, no boots, no bracer, you know, all this junk magic stick you want to buy. Yeah. Garbage. Go straight uh, magic into stick, it. there's an argument you can make for that depending on who you're laying <laughs> against, but you know, uh, that's probably the best item you're gonna buy. Faith faith and he's gonna be laying up with that Theo Rubik up top as well. Spying across the river there. Some beautiful shots of that Roshan pit. I mm -hmm. do love this, uh, love this observer. So Monkey King up top, gonna be with that Pos 5 Enigma. And Enigma against Beastmaster, you know, very similar to the kind of Chen Enchantress. You're able to kill off the boar, right? So you can yeah. mitigate some of that early potential from King Ao, and he's gone Axe is level one. Hmm. Yeah, I and mean, we've been seeing this a little bit. The Axe is just using that to harass and secure creeps with it. Uh, you trade quite well. I think he also cut, just cut down some trees so that the Monkey a King lot. won't be able to... Yeah, you get some good vision there. Uh, what you want to do against this Enigma is you want the position four to be going behind the towers and soaking the XP when the Enigma is denying the creeps. It's yeah. like, um, like look what this, look what Theo is doing right now. Exactly. Yeah. Prime you you want to get at least that little bit of XP there, or else like experience. you're just gonna lose all of it. Mm -hmm. Very important. Very very important and. This hero is incredible position 5. Um, so, do you know what the build is? On the Enigma? Yeah. Do you go Arcane Boots into Blink? No, no, no. A skill build. Oh, skill build? I'm not sure. What do you get up to? Well, Gary, you just keep level 1... Uh, you just keep level 1 of the... Uh, Adlons, that's it. And you just max, max out everything else? else. Yep, you max out stun, you max out Midnight Pulse. And then you just run around and just cast your spells. You know what it's a lot like? Uh, Trent said it perfectly, right? It's like the old Lich. Uh, but in modern day, I would say it's like a it's like a Crystal Maiden, pretty much. Hmm. You just run in, you cast both your skills, and then you get out. And then you go back in, you do the same thing again. <laughs> and keep poking and prodding. Do you think yeah. maybe he's worried this game about the lack of push? That was also brought up by the panel. They don't really have a great amount of tower shove. Would you maybe yeah. consider going an extra point or a couple in the Eidolons, or do you really want to set yourself into that, into that build? I think if you go too oh. much into the Eidolons, wow. oh, what? what happened here, boys? Oh, Viper level 2. That's that is happened. also a kill on the Marana. KJ turns it, but Viper's dived this tier 1. He's got a mango. He wants to double. Oh, KJ, oh, see you later, buddy. Drakeel and Widge. <laughs> Already stamping their mark on that bot lane. Yeah, the yeah. double mangoes. Just going 
at it. I mean, they were not level two yet on this Oracle and the Ursa, which was a huge problem. If they have Fate's Edict, I don't think uh, they're ever going to be able to kill this Ursa, but I don't, I'm not sure he's going to scale that up anyway. You're going to go for your Purifying Flames, right? Yeah. Yeah, and Drakil just TP's back to his tier one, so he's immediately back in that lane. Yep. SG, Coast Abilities crack level two now. Our uncle comes back in, but Marana's going to return. Leaping forward back into battle as they try and burst Drakil down. An arrow's going to slide straight across the front of them. Hold them back. And a bit of regen there shared across <coughs> for the Viper as well. Another couple of mangoes, got his stick. Sorry. Doesn't have another salve though, so HP's a bit of a sticking point for him. And in that mid lane, DP up against the Mars. Robo Z against Adriano. Mars at 13 mm -hmm. 5, already securing a pretty good lead CS wise. Yeah, I mean, this should be a favorable lane for the Death Prophet. Uh, he did go for the level 2 into the Crypt Storm here. It looks like he's having a hard time last hitting against Mars. Because typically you'll see the Siphon getting skill up and just constantly draining the Mars, getting your HP back. So Robo Z is doing very, very well for himself in this mid lane then. Yeah, already got his bottle as well. What server are we playing on this game? I That's believe it's Peru, but I'm not 100% okay. sure. Peru, okay, so it is Peru server, so maybe a little bit of a disadvantage here for ADR, and that's what's going on. Yeah, definitely could be. But I guess the you know, first couple of levels, melee attack animation and all that. Oh, yeah. And now the double nulls It's very for that. difficult. Yeah. Double nulls for Adriana is going to make things much more challenging for the Mars in that mid lane. I mean, well, up top, Monkey King, as we expected, struggling a bit against this King Ao and Theo dual lane. Does have a wave under his tower, but constantly being pressured. But they're always going to be able to farm under this tower because the Enigma's dragging that wave back. Oh, yep. spamming over and over again. And it looks like the Beastmaster most important... shifts back into the boars. The next most important thing, though, as an Enigma, is you need to block that big camp. And I'm not sure if that was already dewarded here, because there is a pull coming out from Radiant. Well, they attempt to go onto King out. They've got this Boundless Strike Ripping. as well. It's a lot of damage onto the Beastmaster. One more hit from the Monkey. He's always got a Fairy Fire. He's all right. Back under his tower. And yeah, Rubik, what's he looking for? That stack and the rune. Mars yep, very classic. He's going to get there Move first. To the off -laner. Absolutely Ooh. classic. Spawns bottom for the Oracle to find a regen rune. Steals it away from Widge. Does get cancelled out pretty much immediately. But there we have it. The classic four heroes mid lane. Yep. Five. <laughs> I mean, the Rubik goes mid. The, the Beastmaster gets jumped up, right? Because the Rubik's going mid for the rune. And then none of the mid laners get the rune anymore. The, I love how Dota has developed into that, Gary. Where the mid laners just don't get runes anymore. Because either the supports are the ones picking it up from both sides. Yeah. Mid laners relinquish to their runes. Enigma playing in an interesting position there. Very forward onto the Rubik. Yodomi gets up into the triangle. So forcing the TP of Theo. I thought maybe that was him playing towards the bounty rune times, but that's another 15 seconds away. So I guess Yudomi there, scouting for stacks, looking for what the Rubik's been up to while he has been off map for quite a while. And Costa Beal doing a similar job down bottom, trying to press forward and bully back this Marana Viper away from the bounty rune. And they'll force Drakeel out of there. KJ is level 3, and we know that level 2 Purifying Flames is, is a substantial amount of magic damage in this early laning stage. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, right. incredibly afraid of it. The, prize is mine. the the worst part for Viper is definitely when you get the uh, Fates Edict, and like to be honest, if I see Viper versus Oracle matchup, if you're the Viper, you should be crying. This is the worst hero that you could possibly play into in the mid and the late game. Oh, that's sad times. All your damage over time just gets neutered. A nice little uh... yeah, magic damage too. Yeah. Hold back by KJ. Get the Ursa out of there. He's got his Ring of Health to keep that sustain going. As we've seen many a time, Battle Fury Ursa going to be coming. Get that farm and acceleration for the little teddy bear. And what do we expect from Burner Burner's Monkey King, though? Because we've seen a lot of different item builds on him, right? The Ags, the Maelstrom, mm -hmm. the Battle Fury. Does he want to try and match the Ursa, or is it going to be more tempo from the Monkey? I think he's going to go Maelstrom. He has to get something that will allow him to fight earlier in the game. And with his Wukong, he has to be joining up early on. You go for the Battle Fury, I think it's going to be too slow. It very well could be. I mean, when you want to be playing along with this 
kind of timing around the ultimates, especially of these dire heroes. Utilizing that Moonlight Shadow over there. Yeah, yeah, Domi's going to get dragged back into the double boars. Can't get rid of them. Burner. Moving forward onto King Al with a boundless strike. A big old Worth whack there. The yep. Decent trade for the Monkey King, for sure. And he's going to force Theo here out of lane. Yeah, check his idol. Check his skill build. 303 on Monkey. <laughs> no Primal Spring. Oh, the Mars Arena. Catching Adriano oh, inside of it. A lot of TBs. In yeah. comes Yodomi and Widge to secure the kill on that mid DP. Yeah, didn't get the uh, spear, but it didn't really matter. There was so much damage there from these three. And that was DP without her EXO, so hopefully she will be TPing somewhere and popping her EXO and taking a tier 1 tower. Um, I don't think mid is going to be that lane. Mars just constantly shoving it out. But if you go to the Beastmaster lane, you can definitely do that. Oh, I, I was really hoping there. Beastmaster has like almost enough money for Necrobook. If DP waited like two or three seconds, could have brought out that oh, little yeah. belt, TP top, Should've. and then had the yeah. Necro with the Exorcism and really timed that push. But it looks like they're going to try and play faster anyway. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you're right. I mean, getting it that been sweet. there would have been <laughs> so good. But he doesn't have the roar anyway. So. And they'll go for it anyway, forcing Wukongs. But under all the ghosts, Burner Burner. Oh, he's so dead. He's being right? destroyed. Misses the boundless strike oh, as well. Dodges. So the DP clears him up. They have rotated yep. the Mars and Marana up here. So potentially catching Theo on his retreat with that one final spear. So tower defended. Oracle's also found himself in this top lane fight. DP XO still going for another, what, 10 odd seconds? One boar up for the Beastmaster, another one in a second, and he does have Raw now. Gonna go in onto that Enigma. That's half HP within a matter of seconds. The Starstorm coming out to return damage, and they've actually survived on Yodomi. Oh, he's alive. He doesn't fall, and they've got another Arena. He's Misses false. the Spear. Robo Z onto Adriano. They've got another Starstorm ready, trying to go onto the KJ Oracle with a nice arrow, and Viper making himself known in the top lane, giving Robo Z a killing spree. Well, they defend the tower, they get two kills. But I would say the big winner here is still going to be the Ursa and the Rubik, who got a bunch of XP while just chilling bottom. So if they got the kill on the Enema, okay, maybe it's a little bit better. But regardless, SG, I don't think they're going to be too upset with what just happened. They did get yeah, the monkey think... kill, after all. Yeah, I think you're right. And that's the kind of situation that I was uh, kind of considering as the game started, right? And you mentioned that defense against offense. Like, unknown, yes, they, they win the fight, they defend the tower, but they're bringing so many heroes there to do it. Overall, map control and efficiency kind of goes down the drain. And Definitely. Bills. And now we got the Necrobook from the Beastmaster. It's finally here. He's popped it. It's going to push his lane out. Marana, though, that's a pretty good hero against uh, the Necrobooks, Gary. Just arrow them. Just one shot. Really yeah, just arrow them. It's always fun. I mean, you're pretty much guaranteed to get something, right? It's either Necrobook or a boar or like, one of the summons in that little clump of units that King Al has. Yeah. Adriana's even gonna come up top for a second time. Oracle blocks the arrow. So never mind what I said, you're not guaranteed anything if KJ stands in your way. <laughs> DP, another 10 seconds on the Exo. Doesn't need to use it because the tower is already gone. And this is where they can, like you say, kind of shift systematically from objective to objective. Top's done, move into mid, clear that up, and create a nice bit of space top for that Ursa to continue farming. Yeah. They do have a little bit of a net worth problem, though, on the start of SG. But that would slowly be brought back into their favor once they continue to farm this lucrative part of the map top. And Nema is bottom with the Viper. This is not something you can defend. But I would love to see SG just making some kind of a play middle right now. Instead of just farming. Yeah, get that Exo going. Adriano shifts in there. Treads double null. Pretty tanky DP. Gets up onto the high ground. Robo Zian Witch. Yeah. They're, they're, they're so scared. It's like a DD level 9 Mars. That does a lot of damage right now. But again, it's that forcing of the hand, right? You look at top. Like, sure enough, you come into mid with a two, three heroes, you defend it, you force SG back. But Beastmaster is on your tier two, farming jungle caps yep. at the same time. Finishes Necro 2 now. <laughs> it feels like he just had his Necro 1. He's already got his Necro 2. <laughs> yeah, Tower Gold is a wonderful thing. This is the build right there. Look at that. Crawling Blade, just like, even that no, one branch? No, one branch. Okay. One casual branch. Yep. Theo walks straight into the Marana. Mars Spear clips him. Arrow. Oh, save. Get dodged. 
a pretty close one. But it constantly feels like this reactive play from Unknown, and they're going to try and break the mold with a smoke with their Enigma and this Viper. Heading down to the bottom jungle, level 8 Ursa. Kostabil is farming there. He's about a sword away. One Claymore off of that Battle Fury, but Monkey King pouncing oh, across the canopy. The jumping from tree to tree, and they do. Nice and range timing, though. He's tanked this up, and he's got the False Promise behind him. So the saves from KJ, getting Kostabil out of there. He's going to TP back to Fountain. He's safe That's and a sound. Lot of damage. Two huge ulties wasted. Is he good? Oh, he's good. He's fine. Nice. Robozy in the meantime in the mid lane does take down Theo with that arena, TPing the Viper back here. And this Adriano DP did get the ghosts going. So exorcism for the second time used without an objective being claimed, but again, forcing Unknown to react to every movement SG makes. Yersa was in the base healing during this time, so he wasn't able to get too much space from whatever occurred. But I mean, I, I will say, I know is doing a really good job in this game, Gary. Because not only do they get the stops, but they go right back at it. Go to go to the tier 1 tower and apply their own pressure while the monkey is farming bottom. Yeah, what does Bona Bona have? He's, he's going Battle Fury and he's not too far off it, about 600 until he's finished. Yeah, I mean, he's actually here. farmed at a really fast pace in this game. 6k net worth already. And all of a sudden, going Battle Fury doesn't seem so bad anymore, Gary. Yeah, he had that one death top and he was like, I'm, I'm going jungle, guys. See, I'm going to keep on farming until I hit my first item. There's a Viper strike out from Rubik. Ursa has finally moved towards the top part of the map. He's like, all right, Beastmaster, buddy, you've had this for long enough. Let me get some of this good stuff right here. Give me the safe farm, please. It's all mine. <laughs> and it's going to be such a, me bottom. such a struggle to actually keep going in this mid lane. You know, Mars acting you know, like that Tide Hunter we've seen so many times. Just big body yeah. in the mid lane. And he's always yeah. going to have the setup with Yule Scepter to catch people out. Maybe even spear them under tower. I mean, he's... Burn up. I mean, this Mars has done such an amazing job in this game. Just winning the lane and making sure the mid tower doesn't take any damage. He only TP'd to fight top lane when the DP was also there. So there was no pressure being put middle. Robo Z is just doing all the right things right now. But if the smoke gank somehow misses and they lose the mid tower, whew, that's going to be a caster's curse right there. No black hole for a minute. SG trying to figure out where these unknown heroes are, and it looks like you know, King Owl slipping away from top. He just about escapes from it. No one in the triangle because Urs is farming down in the bottom jungle. Ooh, burn a burn a nice juicy stack here. It's farming yeah, up. he he just cleared like a three stack large camp, and now is what a, a three stack ancient camp. And where if you look where Viper is, there's another couple of stacks over in that jungle which the Enigma's mm -hmm. been making. So Monkey King can make his way up into that top portion of the map and keep on farming. Dude, seven k net dude. worth now. What's funny is we didn't even get to see this much stacking in the previous weeks, right? But all of a sudden when uh, No Ping beats Beast Coast and obviously all these South American teams are watching them, they're like, hold on, wait a moment. Oh, guys. There's something really good that we're not doing. Their smoke didn't pop, but they still attacked uh, the Mars Illusion. Yeah. Break That's the high weird. ground. And the agents are already farmed. So the best thing you can do right now is maybe stick around and farm this or go from the back here. They're actually trying to pen penetrate the mid tower. This is all they're doing with the smoke or they want to do with the smoke. So to catch someone waiting in the wings, <laughs> find a kill yeah. or two and then push into that tower. No, I mean, those are like well put illusions though, right? Because mm. they were predicting something was going to come up there. Oh, and look at the unknown on the top side. No yeah, one's get showing the, there. Get the bounty runes up there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was well, very, very well timed. I don't know if Monkey King you know, realizes how lucky he is to get away from that triangle when he did. But he's already cleared out another couple of stacks. Seven and a half thousand net worth with Aghanim Scepter queued up as that tier one still being eyed up by the Radiant side. SG won it real bad with the Necro units, the summons. Mars looking to defend with this Enigma having Black Hole again. It is a spooky move from SG, and they've got a Glyph on the Dire team too. They wow. hold back the push. Five heroes from That's... this Brazilian squad all grouping in mid lane while the map is being utilized really nicely by the Dire as the Mars Arena will find the Rubik in the midst of it. Spear him up against the side. 
Exo gets used out by Adriano. They're trying to chase forward onto the Mars. Viper with a nice balance strike out from Monkey. He's going to get the Wukongs out. They've stunned the Beastmaster, so he couldn't get the roar off in time. Still survives. Ashley on the retreat, though, and they've used up Ursa. Enrages and jumps away. Claps back behind his tier one. That's the big circle defense from Unknown. Still holding the black hole, too, but they've held that mid tier one tower. Yeah, not only that, they got the DP to use the Exo, they don't get anything out of that. Ursa and Beast are just way too under farm for the nice time being. fortunes end. Got a lot of bursts from KJ, but a lot of burst returns his way too. That Marana and Mars skewering the poor little Oracle. Oh, this Crypt Swarm. The Necron oh. is going to kill off Viper. Let's go. Yeah, he's yeah. dead. Now, he yields under the kill. Mars. They might actually be able to turn this one, SG, with Rubik still here. They've got Ursa arriving from the top left, and this Beastmaster, sure, he's very low. Can't get in on top of them. Under a Radiant Sentry still, though, the Moonlight Shadow not giving them the safety they would maybe expect, oh, nice but a two-man Boundless and an arrow. That's that going to stop the advance of SG. Yep, I mean, Unknown did a really good job at stopping them, but the way that they moved around, still trying to go towards that DP was a little bit awkward. The Oracle kill was nice. They should just try to focus for the tier 1 tower. Because that should be the focal point at the moment. For both of these teams. Yeah, it's 5v5 mid for a reason, right? <laughs> <laughs> kill yeah. off these towers. And, the, and surprisingly, the person benefiting from all this is just a Monkey King. Because he's able, to, with his battle free, just go back, farm, jump around, come back to the team fight if he needs to. And he is insanely farmed right now. Yeah, like Ursa's trying to do the same thing, but he's playing from behind and a, a decent amount yeah. behind. About 2,000 or so. Does get the deny on the mid tier one, but still opens up. That mid lane for a team unknown. And they could potentially go for a, another smoke move here, but the Enigma's been caught in the mid lane. Didn't even need to spend the roar. Got the tower, so the trade is there. And now SG Exo on the run pop. forward, Exo for the Viper. It wasn't Arcane Rune Exo previously, so that's why it's come up so quickly here for Adriano. As the Spear from the Rubik sends Robo Z packing. And a very low Widge is going to have to run back. They find the Viper, Drakeel down, King out with a double kill. Do they want to go even deeper? I mean, the tier one here is pretty open for them with Exo still running. Robo Z, swift TP home. Arrow catches a boar. And a glyph popped by Team Unknown as the, the Enigmas come down here, but very little they can do to stop this tower actually from dying. Yep. I mean, SG, when they get that Exo going and they already pick up one hero, they're like a 18-wheel truck, you know? They, you just can't stop them. They just yeah, gonna... no brakes. Exactly. They're just going in, going in until the Exo runs out. And that's the only time you can really, like try to fight back on unknown at this point in the game they got the tier one tower mid. that's all they were looking for right now they can farm out the map get to their next item and try to fight again with the next exo unknown got other plans they know exos on cooldown and they don't and they want to retaliate right here yeah they've got all their altars up mars arena's back in seven seconds he is leading the charge with blink yules and they've also got a Yules and Marana, so they've got these double setup abilities for Arrow, for Spear, even for move in from the Enigma with the Black Hole, and they Ursa. start off on the Ursa inside the arena. The Oracle. Arrow to follow, no Enrage, no Oracle save. Too far. KJ too far away, and they've got the catch on the Rubik now as well. It's a, a chain destruction coming through. Theo is going to get shredded, gets a Spear back himself, and KJ blown up by the Monkey King, though, and a double kill for the Marana. Three That's heroes amazing. very quickly dispatched with by Unknown. Are they going to think about Roshan here? It's, they got the Agnims on the monkey, but it might be just too early. The Ursa's only dead for about 30 seconds. I think they're thinking about it. Definitely considering it, yeah. They're in the pit now. Oh, how much? How, how long we got left on this Exo? Because that's probably going to be the most important thing right now. Oh, Are they going to be close. able to stop this or not? Uh, yeah. Ursa's alive now. 10 seconds on Exo. Roshan, 2,500 HP remaining. If they want to go, they've got to go quickly. Oh, they the an illusion. illusion. No. And there's no Necrobook either from Beastmaster. Yep. The move immediately up onto the high ground now. Primal Spring jumping in with a balance strike, but dodged by King out. Nice little maneuver. Gets them out, but still, it's Aegis in the hands of the Monkey King, who is incredibly farmed. 12,000 on his net worth tally. That smoke play, that retaliation play from Unknown was absolutely beautiful. Just finding that Ursa, getting the kill. The Oracle was walking in to try and save him. Rubik was TPing in, thinking that the Oracle was going to get there in time to save him. 
and three kills just going their way. I mean, if Ursa was the only one who died there and Rubik and Orko are still alive, there's no way Unknown are taking the Roshan there. They would have definitely tried something to slow it down. Yeah, it's that one after the other. They will find the Enigma here. Nice little catch with the leaps on Rubik getting up onto the high ground so incredibly quickly. <laughs> Monkey King Here's has to jump SG's away. SG's retaliation with the uh, <laughs> DPX already. And done. Yeah. Urs, Urs has a BKB now too. So it's going to be coming out momentarily. It's a pretty big item. Play around these cooldowns. And they're sticking around bottom lane for the potential tier 2 push there. There's a, a decent wave coming in the top lane though. And it feels like unknown yet again with all the royalties up. Like Moonlight Shadow has just come off cooldown. They could set themselves up at another little run through into the jungle, find another couple of kills. It looks like, yeah, they, they know there's vision on the high ground now. Monkey King gets spotted by the boars, so SG know the Moonlight Shadow is actually coming their way. Heavily, yeah. defensively moving back towards their side of the map. They kind of want to just split up right now while the monkey has in uh, Aegis on him. And we will see Unknown either take this tier 2 tower bottom or try to smoke and penetrate that triangle once again. I think the better play is definitely to just take the tier 2 tower bottom, get the outpost, get more of that map control right now. SG are going to have a hard time just getting up to the top tier 2 and making the same trade. At this point in the game, Unknown is extremely fast at uh, reacting to SG's pressure. Especially with the Aegis. The monkey is not going to have any fear to be able to TP in first. Like especially when Monkey has this tree dance cast range, right? He's able to jump across the map in a matter of seconds. He can catch up to any fights wherever they happen. So if they do decide to, you know, after this tier 2 bot has gone, to try and maybe defend top lane, they could make that move as Mars and Marana do shift into mid and clear out that creep wave for now. They should definitely smoke this Mars and Marana top, though. Right now. That's what I thought we were going to do. TPing in. Okay. Viper TP's mid, in fact, trying to close in on King Owl. Monkey King TP straight onto the tower. They, see they do claim the objective, and they found King Owl missing the spear. Still going to catch him inside this arena with the Nether Toxin. He goes for the TP, but the low ground Malifus from the Enigma stops him. And one down. SG yet again on the back foot, having to return to this bottom part of the map. And Enigma does have the Blink Dagger now. He's got a black hole on the Rubik. Hello, Theo. Caught up in with that God's Rebuke and Spear. Neutral creep killed him. That's the, the benefit ancient... of Enigma 5, Gary. Oh, he did that. The ancient Thunderhide killed him, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So when you play Enigma 5, it's okay. You can literally black hole anybody. As long as it gives your team some kind of a tempo. Maybe in the late game, you want to hold your black hole for something a little bit more important. But if it, if it gets you a kill, it gets you a kill. Mm -hmm. There's nothing lost there. Top tower I feel like we've... Uh... Oh, at least I have. I missed a trick here on this Viper item build. Like Falcon Blade, we've seen a little bit. That feel-good item for the Viper. But Crimson Guard, straight out. Really good up against this DP, right? Good against the Beastmaster and his uh, summons. I'm, I'm really not a big fan of his build, to be fair. I feel like there could have been other items that he could have gone for than the Crimson Guard. How about, you know, Mech or Greaves? It just feels like a better item overall. Hmm. Yeah, heal your whole team. Well, we'll see. Maybe it's good that they plan. have uh, Yules and Mars. So. The jump from Mars. Yules into Yules. King Ao and Robo Z sent Skyward. Another Yules. Yules. There's so many Cyclones dispelled off by the Fortune's End as a Bounder Strike captures Adriano, but it's too close to the staircase of the Tier 3. Yep. This is why Drake Hill did not go for the uh, Atos build this game, because it, they do have a sufficient amount of cash with the Marana and the Mars. Oh, SG smoking. Dyer's top they're coming out of their shell. Oh, they get scanned up, though. Dyer team knows it's coming around these bounty runes. Blink okay. Ursa. Take one and run. Oh, okay. <laughs> Heroes lost all. <laughs> that was bad. Unfortunate for Costa Bill there. And they're pinging out that top they tier, too. They want this yeah. level 2 exorcism to be up and running again. It's a BKB death prophet. With the BKB Ursa you mentioned, now having the Blink Dagger. So a timing for SG to actually get out and accomplish something. Still about 9k net worth behind overall. A decent chunk of that is the difference between the monkey and the Ursa Warrior right now. 
Do you feel like if they clash like 5v5 head on, both teams, similar information of what's happening, the Dire team with the big team fight ulties, do they actually come out on top? Or is this, you know, Oracle, DP, Ursa with all the little bits and bobs they've got with a summons good enough to withstand this massive team fight combo? It just depends where, where the Oracle's boss bomb is comes down onto. Okay, New Crimson comes out. The Viper first. They roll the Viper. There's the BKB Ursa straight onto Drakeel. Doesn't get a single so spell dead. off. They do trade though. Pause three for pause three. Mars Arena expended as the buyback from Viper now, trying to chase forward DP's the Enigma. In. He's not got black holes, so the Death Prophet with the Spirit Siphon and the Ghost Flying do get an additional kill. Viper finally gets a Viper Strike in and the Wukong's command. The BKB ends, so the Yule's an arrow. Andriano's stuck. The Force Pro is saved, but will they have enough heals? There's so much damage on the die side. The Oracle's shredded, and Adriano doesn't stand a chance. Gonna burst in the midst of all of that. Unknown with that one Heels buyback, on even gonna get side. an additional Huge. kill. The Ursa gets speared again. Robo Z on the mega kill streak with that double damage rune slicing through him. Yeah, I mean the Beastmaster, he roared probably the worst hero, right? The Viper is quite tanky with that Crimson Guard. I don't think they had any business going on him. They had to find like a Mars, a monkey, someone more important. This Viper is just a, like a walking Nether Toxin and Crimson Guard. Middle tower is under attack. Probably the least most important hero. And look at DP. She's so strong with the BKB, but then once she goes into the engagement and the BKB runs out, heals herself, she just dies right away. So much magic damage. Yeah, they're breaking high ground with that catapult. Tier 3 on about half HP. And it kind of shows when Viper is so willing to, you know, instantly buy back in that situation. Not, not a single thought about his own item progression. He knows he is the yeah. team player. You gotta get there. You're, it's right. The fight is right beside your tier two. The enemy already popped the EXO. That means they're gonna hard commit into the engagement. It's a very simple buyback. Just get it. Win the battle. Oh, Mirana Ags. We've seen this a couple of times. Usually, a, a team who's severely behind and the runner's like trying to catch up or find you know some way to yeah. to get damage into the game. How, how do you feel about it? In, oh, hang on a second. Mars does get Yules and Roared. He got his BKB and now the Crimson Guard as well. So Drakeel with Burner Burner there, bodyguarding Robo Z to return back to Fountain. But yeah, how, how do you feel about the uh, the Ags Mirana? Mirana Ags, it's so good. But the problem is your support and. You, if you buy the eggs, you're kind of playing like a core, and then you're just letting the Viper be the position four essentially in this game. But it's really good. It gives a lot of damage. Um, you got the Mars set up anyway, or your own Yules. I expect them to go for like a maybe E Blade later. E Blade, Arrow, Starstorm combo deals well over 2,000 damage. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah, so good against all these summons, too. I just throw the arrow into the middle of all the Beastmaster summons, get these star yeah. storms going. That's actually how you counter Beastmaster, you know, just kill his summons. Uh, Kunkka, for example, one of the better heroes against Beastmaster because he got that Tidebringer, the Torrent, the Bolt. Every time the Beastmaster just goes in, as long as you X mark him, combo him, you should be able to kill his summons at the same time too because they're typically stacking right on top of him. Well, with Roshan respawning in about a second, SG in a pretty good spot here to know what's going on. They've got a hawk up above the pit as well, seeing the big man's alive. But again, all the green lights are flashing up here for Team Unknown. Only Moonlight Shadow is lacking. What, what's the next step for SG? Because it feels like now they're being bullied a little bit. They can't really sneak Roshan. Pushing lane seems a little bit dangerous. What's the move? They gotta camp the high guns. They gotta wait for Unknown to walk into them, to be honest. And wait for the next Roshan to sp or not the Roshan to spawn, but like wait for something to happen around Roshan. Radiant are scanning. And try to get a fight where they sh can surely just jump a good target, like either a Mars, a Monkey, or Marana. Any anyone who's not a Viper, Gary. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> just stop. <not> stop. Stop. <laughs> yeah, the Viper. Viper is actually just not really a hero with the build that he has. Even though they know Viper doesn't have buyback, like is that a consideration where you're like Viper has a bit more validity to I mean, being initiated on now? I feel like the Viper just dies in like the middle of the fight once you jump him after you kill somebody else, right? The big damage sources right now are the huge problem, not the Viper with his Crimson Guard. He's probably the, he, he's less valuable than this Enigma. This Enigma, the threat of the black hole with the blink and stuff and the stuns, the ma the midnight pulse, he's doing way more damage than the Viper is. 
Yeah, and then there's the the king here, Burner Burner's Monkey King. Scardy BKB on top of that Battle Fury Axe he's already had for a while. They're into the Roche Pit, not a fear in the world. As SG are the ones that have to smoke and make that drastic move. DP and the Beastmaster leading the charge. The Hawk over the Roshan does spot them inside. The Wukongs though, the big circles are coming out from the Dire Team. Can they clear the summons? The Mars Arena there. In comes the Enigma, killing off the Rubik immediately. And SG bleeding out at this point. The DP's exorcism, yes, it's going. They're trying to focus any target they can find, but there's no Ursa. The bear is out, and they black hole this death bomb with the false yeah. promises there, sure. But the damage is just insane from Team Unknown. Another Yule's up into the air. The ghost still flying, but the chain stuns with the arrow, the spear. It's another four kill sweep through with Roshan claimed, Aegis Cheese in the hands of the monkey. And Team Unknown looking real hot. Oh, Gary, I don't think you are, you could you could just give up Roshan like that. It, even if the Ursa just blinks in BKBs and tries to go on to the Monkey King and tries to take it, he, sh he should have done it. But you see Marana, he leapt in, yuled the Ursa, so there was no fight to be had. And he walked away. You can check it on the minimap here on our replay and then at that point he's like okay guys this fight's over beastmass is already dead dp is away from me <laughs> and the is like i'm out he's out yeah and he just goes and farms elsewhere hoping to live to fight another day well the circle strap from team unknown it's blossoming into a beautiful thing right now bottom tier three which they'd already done half hp to uh, good what seven eight minutes ago now clear through it they do take the ages yules onto the enraged ursa warrior Looking to try and get him out of there with a BKB and the jump back. The Viper does get dragged in with a good bash. They take down Drakeel. A Midnight Pulse placed for good measure. Hold back SG, but they actually get the raw forward onto the Mirana. Where's the backup for King Owl? Oh, He's made this move tree. alone. They don't get the jump forward. Monkey King's BKB now wearing off. Starts up a four staffed out. Unknown trying to hard retreat from this as Theo, the Monkey King, has killed off the Rubik. Now a spear into the arena, the False Promise and Rage. Ursa stands his ground, battles the Monkey. Wukong's command is there, but he's pretty low HP on Burner Burner. They can't kill off Ursa before all of that sustain is gone. He does pop in the end with no buyback available, so SG gonna lose a lot. No matter what, they kill the Monkey King. And maybe the Mars, but in comes the Enigma, holds them back again. Another stun with the arrow from the Marana Ags. Loads of burst damage and a five-man wipe is incoming. Because he's got to be a little bit careful about the spirit siphons of the ghosts. Adriano, I don't think he's going to be able to <laughs> nice. heal up. They need to that finish him off before the ghosts arrive. Yeah, he's live training as best he can, but another five-man wipe for Team Unknown. Beautiful yep, stuff. Very good kind of. They, they committed, but I mean, that fight was only possible because of the arcane rune of the Death Prophet from the previous engagement, gained that... Uh, Exo back up much quicker, but they lose their axe and they get a five man wipe. At the end of the day, unknown, they're going to be very happy about this. Just get back on the map, start controlling, just top and mid, take the tier two tower. They can even wait for the next Roshan if they want to. Like, there's literally no nothing that unknown is worried about going into the late game here. Yeah, like top lane is dying to creeps right now. Beastmaster gets the Roar and Marana mid. TP's immediately there to slice down that priestess. So another 70 seconds where Unknown might have to wait. It's like a 50 second window for SG to try and do something when the DP will be up and the Murano will be down. But again, the question is always going to be, what, what is that something? You know, it, it's not a simple tier one. It's these tier twos which Definitely. are going to be easily defended by the Dire. There's no Roshan. Lines drawn no, on the map. Like a Ursa Basher to, and the Rubik to just run around and try to kill someone who's trying to play by themselves but unknown are just not giving the opportunity to do so they are constantly just grouped up together i also has a chrysalis queued that's usually a pretty big indication of i want something now give me damage, damage right now <laughs> there's the mars ulti two-man spear oh, oh it's job. gorgeous from robo z destroys both supports enigma's come yeah. in he's got black hole ready yules the dp up i don't think you need the, the black hole for that it's gonna viper striker Take it down with the right clicks. Simple as you, you like. Guys. Another Yule's up, but it looks like this is the beginning of the end for SG in game one. 70 seconds without Death Prophet and no buyback. Maybe if they can get a couple of bounty runes, she can afford it. She's like 200 away, but you can't get out on the map like this. Okay, who's your MVP of this game? <laughs> I think it's the Mars, on, no. honestly. Uh, that's gotta be unanimous, right? Like, this Mars, he is so... He's slaying it. Like from, 
from winning his lane to his rotations, defending the mid tower, his spell casting has been on point. I mean, sure, he's missed a couple of spears here and there, but that that, that, that really didn't matter that much. If even I know who the MVP is, you know, it's got to be. Yep. Rax fall in mid lane again. Two lanes down. Who's that roar on? They're trying to catch Burner Burner's monkey, but there's the black hole. Where's the save? Oh, the black holding hole? false promise for the last second. Rubik, no. he got himself a sacred arrow, but they've lost KJ. Oh. Traded for Yodomi, and that false promise on the coast of Beale, he might actually just pop and die from it. Indeed, he does. Buybacks available, so he will return to the battlefield. Ten seconds for Death Prophet to respawn, and another lane coming for Team Unknown. Top and shift into fifth gear. Yep, Give good call the from the Anima. He sees that uh, the Rubik popped his spell steal already. So that was on cooldown. You, uh, Black Hole could not be taken. Spoil that shot. And forcing buybacks from SG really <laughs> feels rough. They got the one racks. It's okay, let's just go back, you know. Pump up the gas. Yeah, clear top lane. Marana gets a ton of farm. Man, this Marana blade is coming out. She's gonna have it before <laughs> game ends, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very good, especially to use it uh, defensively on the hero who gets ward. Because then the DP is EXO and the Ursa can't just kill that hero. So many purposes for this uh, E blade Marana. Absolutely right. I asked you to try real hard to blow that one target up. So they're sitting and waiting. They've got that one Observer Ward, they're trying to play with their vision, smoking up from the mid lane. But look at how good that Arrow Star Storm is. It flies through into that mid creep wave, kills off like half the wave, half the summon's dead. Oh, the Dire Vision. They see the Earth, so the smoke breaks. Silence used by Adriano. Unknown, not making any hasty decisions though, not jumping hardcore into the middle of all of them. SG just reposition themselves using... Whatever little advantages they can get, whether it's terrain, space, whatever, whatever they can find, they'll take it. But it looks like Death Prophet's a little bit stranded now. Beastmaster blinks back to high ground. They've got the stuns in on Death Prophet. Bombs her BKB and the ghosts come. Robo Z with the arena there, but triple BKB from SG. Turning and fighting the Viper, bashing Dracul up. But the monkeys found the Beastmaster Jesus, in the burner. back. Robo Z takes 30% of his HP immediately. And now the Death Prophet down. Does have buyback, but with no exorcism, doesn't feel worth it. Ursa, Ursa, Ursa. They're being chased by Burner, Burner, Burner. Wukong's command even going to get thrown in there for good measure. And a double kill for Monkey King leads to good game. Good game. Yep. Very good game. I mean, unknown, they played so well from start to end. Uh, they had to do that. They had to make all these stops on all the lanes. Uh, they also had to get a little bit ahead in the laning stage too. Viper and the... Marana won bottom lane, and then Mars won the mid lane. So you already got two out of three lanes in your favor. And from there, you just had to make the correct plays, right? They defended mid first. They waited for the DP to leave that lane to go somewhere else. And then they defended that lane. And then they went straight back to mid, making sure that the mid tower does not die early enough. And all of that gave so much space for space for the Monkey King, who bought Battle Fury, to get all his items. While the Ursa was constantly catching up because of that buy from Marana lane. And how hard it is for him to uh, get ahead. Yeah. Absolutely spot on. I mean, a bit shaky from SG in a must-win series for them to try and get that potential.